All right, here we go. Oh my God, we have so much to go over. Uh, see, the funny thing is I tried to like, you know, put it into notes and figure out how exactly I was gonna, you know, the order in which I was gonna discuss this. But to be honest, I'm just gonna wing it because there, I mean, like you'll, you'll understand by the end of this little, whatever you wanna call it. I think that I'm gonna start with going over the count from the last video and the obvious make or break point. So really briefly, do I have the count still? Let me get off off on demand. I save all of like my dead counts like a madman. Like look at this, it's kind of stupid, but it's good for educational purposes. So I think it was this one, yeah. So this is the chart we were looking at before. Um, we were looking at, you know, I was saying in the last video how should the bear trend continue, we would expect to see, you know, this like 45 level. And I'm and there was like a pretty solid case for that happening. But I also noted the make or break level here at $104.12. And so as soon as that level was broken, that was a signal that like, okay, this is about to blow up. And so that was a huge, huge, huge buy signal. Um, if anyone caught that move, sh hell yeah, what a move that was. So now let's dig into, I don't even know the order to go with. So. First and foremost, let me just show you, you know, what we're, what we're working with now and ignore like the little annotations. Those are just, those are for me and me alone. But this is, and like, yeah, you've seen this so many times, but now it's finally, you know, we're finally starting to make this move up. And so what's really exciting is, so something that I was watching as a very low probability, but it was still important to, you know, keep an open mind to it was, a possible expanding count, wherein this move here would be the equivalent to something like this here. And so the reason why we had to, you know, watch that is so, ignore the annotations here. What we were looking at was, you know, this would be a three, A, B, C into four, and then another leg down. That was, that was a possibility. But exciting news, that's now off the table. So for one, here's this really briefly, this one, two, three, six tick here was, we ticked it on earnings and that has to make you think, oh, is this expanding? And so, you know, really briefly, just to show you how this works. If we draw out the ratios, um, the level we get to watch for the top of the expanding comes out to this level right here at 150.84. And I'll pull it up on a much smaller time frame so you can see. And we hit that literally right here. I'll clear all the other levels. So, yeah. Right, literally to the tick. And the level was 150.84. We came up and hit a high of 150.93 within nine cents. And that target was drawn using data from January 24th to March 17th. That's a two month time span that gave us, you know, the short term top at least at, you know, with, mar with a margin of error of nine cents, which is pretty crazy. You know, that's pretty cool. And I'm sorry, I am kind of baked. So I'm, my, my head's all over the place. But here's the thing. All right, we hit that level and we started to sell, but then on Friday we came above. And so, and this pretty much kills the, you know, the potential for a, a sharp, like a really sharp flush down. But here we go. So, that little blip out of the way, let's go back to here. And here's where it gets really, really exciting. Beca and because, you know, because that bear case is dead, is dead, gone. Sorry, bears. GameStop's going up. What we're looking at now is this count here. And... Just look at this for a second, and I'm going to show you where it gets really, really exciting. So for one, obviously, the way we're looking at it is the downtrend is finished, and we can verify that because this, you know, the 150 level I just showed you, the 151, the break above that, you know, that's our com confirmation that bear case is dead. Officially, it is dead. So you have this chart here, and here's where it gets fun, right? Now I'm going to pull up on demand. And I was thinking, like, what cycle does, like, the move that we're seeing out replicate the most? And then, you know... I've been sta I stayed up so late every night of the week. I probably averaged like an hour or two of sleep consistently because I was just thinking about this. And here we go. This is it. So the way we're looking at this is January of 2021. And the way we're looking at this is this sharp move up here on the 17th, or on the 11th of January 2021 is the equivalent to our after earnings move right here. Same thing, right? Boom here, right in the beginning of the day. Pull up on demand. Same thing. Like, this was pre-market, but still, same thing. And then you'll have, what, like, let's just say two to three days of not much, and then, boom. This day we ran up, like, almost 100%. If anyone was holding back then, what a day. But, you know, come back to here, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. But here's where it gets fun, right? So... We have all this drawn out, and I've, you know, I've showed you how we could have predicted this level here, 
which we did, which was awesome. But now what we have to do is, or I'm gonna show you the trading view, but I'm gonna go to a much smaller time frame so you can see like the much smaller subdivision, right? So this is what we're working with. And I, I think I tweeted this image out, or it was, it was before we had this move. I think the, did I have it in here? Maybe, 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 yeah. So this is what I had before Friday. I do this on Thursday, and then on Friday we, you know, broke a little bit higher. And so the way, instead of this being a typical zigzag, you know, ABC down, we, I'm looking at it as a flat, where we'll have, it's ABC, ABC, one, two, three, four, five. And the correction's over, and then we have another leg up. So before I go into targets for that, we just remember this formation, because here's where it gets fun. It's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. So, sorry, there's a bunch of ratios on here. I'm going to dig into that in a second, but I need to go from the beginning. So, what you'll see is the way the ratio is drawn is we go from the low of this move up to the high. This is, you know, let's say, for simplicity's sake, this was the low on earnings. This was 150 right here, the way it's drawn. And so, what you'll see is, you know, before we had the 150, or, you know what? Oh, I can't even do it because I'm using on-demand. I have to go back and forth. But what I want you to look at is what I have circled here, right? Before we came up to hit this high, we had a test of this 382 level before it was drawn, technically. But then again, then you hit the high, and you get this level here of 34.3. So we would expect to take that before making, you know, the next leg up. And obviously, you know, we got that within level was 34.31. The low we had was 34.01. So within 30 cents, you know, pretty good. But you'll see, you know, a double test, and then I move up to a higher high. But here's the thing. Now we'll go smaller, and we'll measure this little ratio out here. And so if we measure this as the A leg up, um, this would be a 1, 2, 3, 6 tick if it should mimic what we're seeing now. And boom, right there. The level it gave is 45.7, 45.52, within 18 cents. So we have that. And then finally, I already have the ratio drawn, but the level we would expect to see to the downside before finally breaking up into a newer high would be where a equals c and so in this instance our a leg down was quick math 43 minus 34 let's say about nine bucks so 45 minus 9 gives us about 36 and there we go see how that works so now i'll go back to where we are now and this is why i don't think it just rockets out the gate on monday it very well could it very well could and the the confirmation see that would be a break and sustain hold above 160 in which case it runs up but I think we see this first, just because this is tracked so well so far, and 134 is the equivalent to, you know, 36 back in January, and so that's what I'm watching as like a, you know, a short uh, for the short term at least, the final loading zone to really catch this monster of a rip. But now let's fast forward a few days. Let's just go a day or, or two days after that low hit. Boom. Or okay, that's a little bit farther ahead, but we're looking at up to here. So this was the day the low hit, one day later, two days later. This would act this would equate to Wednesday, just for the record. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out. As to like the dates of which, you know, when this will actually happen, I, I really want to say Tuesday, but I don't like putting dates on anything. I I'm just there there's like no there's no way to tell. There's no way to tell the exact date. But I would assume that, you know, assuming it tracks the exact same, which, you know, as they say, past performance is, you know, indicative of future results, we would expect to see this, this 36 is equivalent to the 134 level. And then from there, we'd expect either one day, either two days, or most expected would be two days after that low comes in. But, you know, there's been, there's a lot of reasons to believe Tuesday morning it happens. You know, our max pain for the week was 125. We closed at 150. So that's a lot of shares, man. But anyways, right, what we'd assume is this 134 level before it starts to break up. And going back to here, there was actually a way to, you know, predict this high at... 76 i believe and i'm not even going to draw just because i have it in discord but just to run you through it really quickly to see that it actually was possible but from the wave perspective right this is uh, sorry i'm i'm so cooked but one two three four five into one right so from here one to two we'd expect a really sharp sell-off as for price levels in this instance um a bit of an anomaly but if i were to or you know what let me let me just show you this so if we measure this using you know typical waves one to three, down to four, you know, these were targets here. But cool, so I mean, so now you understand like the shorter term stuff. And I mean like, you just like visualize the count here if you want. Um, what's cool is like with waves, you could actually predict like pretty much the entire, you know what, yeah, let me just run you through that because it, this is like pretty fucking crazy shit.
So the way, if we were watching this in real time using waves, we would draw, if, if we looked at this as the wave one up and, and then the sell off being the two. Full disclosure though, normally you would expect the two to come lower, but in this instance, you know, this was quite the volatile day. So there is no way to tell for certain that it would go, oh, it'll go exactly from 76 down to 54 before, you know, it starts to make the next leg up. There is no way to tell back then. And so anyways, what you would do to predict the next leg up is we'll draw the low to the high of the entire five leg move up to low down and then the ratio is already drawn but you'll see it there at 131 and so we ticked this level here that was okay that there's your three and if you look here the four does not come into the territory of the one in pre-market right it never broke down and then finally your five should be um 0.618 to 786 extension of waves one to three and so the 618 extension came out to 158.86 we hit a high of 159.18 there is no way in hell anyone could have got up that came up with that target if you weren't using rate fibonacci ratios because at this point in time we're in completely uncharted territory remember and if i pull up like a one minute like look how insane this is it's 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 mind it's completely mind-blowing but you know seeing that tick that's you know, that completes a larger degree wave one. And so obviously what comes after wave one, mega sell off. After wave one, um, obviously you have a wave two and your wave two is going to be a very deep retrace against the trend. In this case, the trend is bullish. So we would expect a huge bear wave down. Um, and then here we actually filled the gap, you know, to the tick at um, 61, like literally perfect. But now let's move, now let's move forward even more. It, it, like it gets so crazy. It gets so wild. Um, next day starts to rip up um but to what we would do to see next targets from here is if we go low of one to the high of one to the low of two these give us or let me clear these out we would expect anything from the one to one to the one six one eight but you know usually you'll come above the one to one and it'll be at least one six one eight's most common but it can be any of these and so if i'll skip ahead to the next day the 27th I need to zoom out. <laughs> there were there were a few ways you could have seen this. Um, you could have seen the three up to here, four, five. But he, I'm not even gonna. This was when Elon tweeted, so this is a bit of an anomaly. But I, I you know, I think the Discord messages do it more justice, right? Um, so in this instance, this is when Elon tweeted, the expected top for the wave three was 291, but. Obviously, you know, we ended up taking the two to one extension at 345. I think that t I think the high we hit in the pre-market that day was like 360, 361. So within wrong picture. So literally within like 15 bucks, which is still pretty crazy considering how well, you know insane the factors at hand were. And then finally for the four, you'd expect an ABC, right? A B C. This was a, a running flat again, but I'm not I'm not gonna dig too deep into like the structure of it. We would expect the two oh two to mark the low, and in this instance it hit two oh nine, so it was seven bucks off to predict one final leg up. And finally the top for that move came out to two targets between four thirty three and four ninety. And that would have marked the end of the impulse sequence back then, which says, Okay, we're about to sell off hard, and that's exactly what happened. So now that you see that like there is some predictive power to this, we'll take that back into where we are in our current positioning. And oh my god, does it get exciting. And the way it all comes together, it's like, it's too good to be true. So I've showed you the similarities between January and now. And and because the bear count is dead with the break over 151, you know, that's just even more confirmation bias to what's about to ensue. But to draw next targets from here, we take the high of three down to the presumed low of four. Let's just say 134, assuming we get that on Monday. If we do, awesome. If we don't, it adjusts the targets a little bit. And I'll I'll show you them like in a tweet if it doesn't happen. But I am so convinced that we'll see this 134 before it starts to rocket up. So the targets for the high of that move up from there come between 180 and 192. And what's really interesting is this 192 level I have is... Oh my god, this just this just screams insanity. <laughs> not never mind. It's not even a good example. But the levels we'd be looking for from up to there would be between 180 and 192. And that that 180 to 192 would this is where it gets a little interesting. It would either it depends how you look at it. It could constitute the equivalent to this move up to 70 or it could be the 159. And we'll, we just need to see how it moves in real time to understand that. As for now, it could be either or. But my expected trajectory for this run is I'm going to pull up the trading view again just because it's visualized. 
my expected trajectory is this. Right, this move, this final, this is like up to here, it got up to between anywhere between 180 and 192, assuming we come down to 134 on Monday. Now, if we don't, the targets would actually be a little bit lower. It'd be like 170 and 182, something like that. But again, that doesn't really matter. We'll know if we're making that move right away on Monday if we break and hold above 160. If we don't, we're coming down to 134. But from here, let's say 190 down to, again, this doesn't, this is purely hypothetical. But let's just say, I do think that like 120 would make a lot more sense to coming down to 93-ish. But just lay out, laying out the possibilities, right? And from there, this 3 would be about 270. And I don't even have like a, okay, this is clean enough. But that 270 move, the way we would measure that is, this is actually really interesting. So we take the low to the high of the largest degree wave that we're currently in, and the low we hit was like 75-ish. Oh, I, perfect, I already have it drawn. Um, this 267, this this ratio here, you'll see that often for, you know, the wave three of, or for a wave one of five, within a wave three, or a wave three of five within three, and that might not make too much sense, but basically, if trajectory goes, or let me go pull up a smaller time frame, or hold up, I need to start a new video. Or what was I just saying? Okay, so that 260, again, let's just say the move we're expecting this week, or like by Tuesday or Wednesday, comes up to 192. 618 retrace of that is, you know, about a hundred, about 125. But it'll, I, let's just let's just say like 90s because it, it makes a little, it, it'll make this visualization a little bit easier. If it comes back down to like the 90s ish, then these would be like, this is your level of confluence right here, 280 and 269-ish. But uh, that's like subject to change just because we don't have this low in here yet. But this huge drop down from like 180-ish that I was just talking about would be, you know, the same thing as, where is it? This rug pull right here. If I go back two days, it'll make, it's a little bit easier to visualize. Right? Yeah, this rug pull right here. Yeah, there you go. And there's the ratio and everything. So we'll see for that. I like, I mean, obviously I'll have an idea, a much better idea when it's actually playing out, but this is just me like laying out the thesis moving forward. But in my opinion, the way it's going to go is like, you know, 190s to anywhere between 130s to low 90s up to 270, then to 220 to 240 ish. And again, if I just show you, I don't really like trading view, full disclosure. I like thinking from a lot more, but that's also just because I don't really know the platform that well. In this case, the 382 from here would be 205. So. I guess you can move to 205. This doesn't really matter. But then finally, if we measure extensions, trend base extension from 76 to 270 to here, then that gives, was this 786? Perfect, yeah, 358. Again, this is just hypothetical, but this is why I think 350, triple top, and then we're gonna see like a repeat of what we saw in March, right, like this. Asked, asked if it'll be that aggressive, I don't know. Um, but 350 is a big psychological level. Um, that's just the thinking. I really don't think it blows through here the first go, just because of like the ratio support. And I, I mean, I just show you like the how it'll be drawn out. Obviously, it's trying to develop, so I have a much more precise target. But this 350 area is a huge psychological level. Um, so uh, what I would expect over the next like few week or two, three, I don't know. I can't put a time frame on it. All we know is like once we get the first move up to 180 with a really big sell off, then all of this, everything you see here is confirmed. If we, when we run up to 180 to 190, make a higher low relative to 76, then all of this is about to happen. All of it. Which is like, oh my fucking god, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Um, and like, again, these, this is just like a, a rough visualization, but, uh, but it could very well come from 350 down to like 120, or even lower. But not below 76. And uh, again, like we'll have a much better idea of this once it's actually happening, purely forecasting. But then again, right after we have this rejection and a higher low relative to 76, this is what this is the tsunami right here. This is like the fabled move that I've been talking about for so long. The three of three of three. The tsunami so and it'll probably go from this will probably be like a three to four hundred point rip in like a day or two when this is really happening um but the thing is like this whole larger projection that, that i have here there's no time frame for this because once it really starts to move the way i have it mapped out is like it won't just be instant but i can't imagine them like holding it above 500 for months it doesn't make like it i'd assume this would just you know go full up full on erratic before 
like once it really starts to move but that's just me i don't know but now you have like you understand where my head's at what i think happens moving forward oh my god this is going to be crazy i i, I cannot wait i truly can't wait but hopefully you found this video interesting. I'm sure I missed something. Like the way, oh wait, really quickly, let me also bring up the, um, like if you caught the spaces that I hosted a few days ago, I was talking a little bit about, you know, the four hour, 20 day exponential moving average. This green line right here. And I said that actually as a launch pad and we want to see a retest of that before we take off because if we pull up on demand. Um, I mean, this applies to every, you know, quote unquote cycle that we've had, but you'll see here in January, you know, this is where I assume we're at now. We didn't rock it until we had this retest of the green line. We actually tested it twice before it broke out. But that's what I'm watching for. And the cool thing is, actually, why is it on demand? I turn it off. Yeah, I need to clean up my charts. Jesus Christ, this just screams insanity. But the cool thing is, what you'll see is, like, this 134 and this 20-day moving average, it's, like, the same thing. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy how that works. So with that being said, that's my thesis moving forward. I guess really quickly, like the potential for the short-term bear case, I will lay it out just because some people might want to know, but I, I highly doubt it goes like this. The short-term bear case is this is a one, two, three, four, five up to here, in which case, you know, we'd expect an ABC down to a much lower level than current valuations. You know, we'd expect to come down to like 92 before it starts to rip. But I find that unlikely. I think we come down you know once it's a lot more volatile but you have that possibility laid out in the event that you know they really want to screw everyone that thinks it's gonna moon right now and bring it down to there before it rips up but it's a possibility you know we we just don't know you know what i think happens i think it goes like this <laughs> i like i like i can't contain my, my excitement i just can't do it there is Obviously, you guys know that I'm a degenerate options trader. I am planning on, you know, trading this like a, like crazy. I'm going to, you know, this is going, this is like my vindication. It's like everything that I've been working for and studying has like led up to what's about to unfold. And if I can call the rips and the dips right, I'm more concerned about calling the tops right because, oh, there's so much money to be made. I like did some back testing here, you know, playing into the fibs that I had drawn and I turned like a two thousand dollar principal into over twenty mil by the end of it, over over the course of like a week. So it's like, it's very possible. We'll see. I I don't think I don't think it'll be like that for me. But you know, you never know. We'll see. This is revenge for my failed yellow way back when. But also that was a very undisciplined, if that's the word. That was not a disciplined play at all. That was pure FOMO. We never broke a key level that I was watching out for. I was about to get on a fucking plane, for God's sake, and I thought it was going to moon, so I just threw my money into out-of-the-money calls, and by the time I landed, they were down, like, 50%. So, you know, I've learned to not do that anymore. I don't act on emotion when I trade, and I also understand that, that the majority of people watching this aren't traders, and that's, you know, that's all good. There's... I understand that this is like a big equity play and I do have an equity position, don't get me wrong, but I'm a trader and I, I love volatility. So I'm very excited for the days ahead, weeks ahead, maybe even months ahead. Oh, we don't, no one knows how long it's gonna play out for. But just know if we see this 134 bounce on Monday, it is on. And if we break above 160 before we get that, or the thing is, if we broke above 160, we probably won't come down to here. It'll just rocket up to the 180s. But if we see this bounce, oh my God, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. But cool, I think I've said everything I needed to say. If there's anything I didn't answer, if you have any questions, um, tweet me or like leave a comment, but let's fucking go. Peace.